Pastor Noel. Today we'll be talking about Dojo Shogun. I'm joined by Justin Chia, who is the project manager at Kachara Soup Kitchen in Kuala Lumpur. Justin, can you tell me a little bit more about your role within Kachara Soup Kitchen and what Kachara Soup Kitchen actually does? Hi, Pastor Neil. Um, actually, in Kachara Soup Kitchen, we have two programs. One is the, is the Soup Kitchen program and the other one is a Food Bank program. And under the Soup Kitchen program, we actually help them to get off the street to, to help them to get a better living or seek medical aid or try to give some a little bit of a, a counselling uh, help to them. Whereas in the food bank uh, program, we help to send some provisions to them um, where the beneficiary are the ones who are actually from the poor families. So this work that you do in Kachara Soup Kitchen, is it an extension of your Buddhist practice? Yes, it is. Um, and to, it is a parameter of giving that we are practicing in Kachara Soup Kitchen. At the same time, mm, well, we actually uh, we will see quite a lot of suffering uh, suffered by the homeless people and also um, we see the poor condition of our poor families, their home, you know and we realise that it's actually there's so much more that we have to do. Since you've been practising Dojo Shukan, has there been any benefit to you or has there been any benefit to the people around you that you know of? To be honest, I'm not a very spiritual person and my Dharma knowledge is, is just very uh, shallow. And well, at first, how did I manage to just uh, pick up this practice? I, uh, I, it is, actually, I couldn't answer you directly, but um, interest just struck me and I began to uh, slot in uh, Doji Shokten practice into my daily sadhana practice. And over a while, I, I did notice a little bit of change in me but uh, well what sort of changes in me I feel I my belief into uh, Dharma practice or some Buddhism uh, uh, theories or articles some teachings uh, especially the ones uh, provided by my guru His Eminence Sam Tukuru Mbuche, I felt mm, I can relate to it easier I can actually mm, understand the article better, the teachings better and personally I feel this way I, I feel very fortunate because why I'm able to understand more about Buddhism and thanks to Dojo Shokten actually and how lucky am I to be actually connected with uh, Dojo Shokten's practice and also I feel like you know I should share it with people you know because I have personally benefited from this yeah, especially in my work as well. I, I work, as you know, I, I work in the soup kitchen and most of the time I, I deal with people's problem and I see people's problem every day. And most of the problem is actually very hard to be uh, so-called fixed. You know, uh, I fix people's problem, that's why. And in some cases when we have to go through some uh, government agencies or government departments where sometimes paperwork and, and we, we do hit some stumbling block along the way. Well, it is actually this time of the year, at this moment, I will actually uh, embark myself into uh, seeking Lord Dojo Shukden's help by um, maybe thinking about his images and also chanting his mantra and to seek help to ask for a smooth uh, uh, process for this particular homeless case that I'm actually uh, dealing with. And, and to my surprise, it actually, <laughs> most of the time it just came out uh, to, to uh, actually, not most of the time, actually many of the times, it's actually uh, literally all of them actually, um, it became very smooth for me. And, and, and I'm telling to myself, and I always look up into the sky and say, oh, thank you, Lord, then just pray. <laughs> and also, um, when there were a few cases where, uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of volunteers coming to volunteer in uh, Kacharasu Kitchen. And some of the volunteers actually came to me and seek help into spiritual advice and, or, or just tell me their problems. And uh, a lady volunteer actually came to me and said that uh, she had problems sleeping because there's someone actually um, uh, talking next to her ears and trying to wake her up from time to time and she would get nightmares and then her son 
would see uh, dark images floating outside of the, on, on his uh, bedroom uh, window. So immediately, without a single hesitation, I just um, told her about my benefit, uh, the benefit of uh, practicing Doji Shri Den, and I recommended her to do it um, ASAP. So um, I gave her the mantra, I gave her the uh, image, uh, downloaded it from the internet and sent it to her. And immediately uh, she did it that night. And the next morning when I uh, called her to just find out how is she. And to my surprise, actually she said, oh, the disturbance gone, totally gone. It's like, no more. And the next day, and I, I also did ask about the, 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 how was the son. And the son over time said, oh, the son told her that um, he no longer sees something floating out in, uh, from, the, the, from the window frame. And for myself, I, I feel as well, when, when I'm in a dark area, you know, I just need to think, uh, focus on to, uh, Dojo Shukden's uh, image and chant the mantra myself. Then my fear, within fear of the, the environment, is already gone, just magically gone. <laughs> So you've seen how the practice of Dojo Shukden has benefited you in your personal life and also your work life. Not only that, you've seen how Dojo Shukden's practice has benefited others, especially with the people that you mentioned that were having spirit problems. Mm -hmm. And the practice of Dojo Shukden helped to clear those particular problems. There is, however, a controversy that exists around the practice of Dojo Shukden. And a lot of people are persecuted and there's a lot of segregation against Dojo Shukden practitioners. What are your views on that? Well, my view is actually, um, why is that necessary? Why is the um, discrimination or the persecution, the killings and, and whatever it is going on in the Tibetan Buddhism, it is really unnecessary because of uh, life is so precious. I see people are suffering <laughs> everywhere, every day. I mean, people, homeless people without food, they go hungry, poor families, unable to come out from their poor uh, surroundings. And here we are looking at people being killed, prosecuted, or being discriminated, disowned, or even they don't get jobs because just because they are Dojo Shukden practitioner. I feel it's really unnecessary. And when I read uh, more and more about the articles uh, claiming that Doji Shukdeng is actually something harmful and something negative, um, for me, I feel it's really illogical because it is really, uh, it's like countering what my experience, because my experience is uh, towards Doji Shukdeng is actually very positive and all of my friends also uh, benefited from uh, Doji Shukdeng practice. And I feel this plan is actually very, very unnecessary and especially the suffering that has been inflicted onto the Dojo Shukden practitioners. So throughout your experience of Dojo Shukden, you do see it as a beneficial practice for yourself and others. And on the side of the controversy, you can't understand why there is a controversy and why people engage in that persecution, in that segregation, because you see suffering that already exists. Yeah. And is it because you, wanna, you don't want to see more suffering that you don't want people to be segregated? I feel it's really unnecessary because why uh, we have to ban something so beneficial to the people uh, just because uh, it was claimed to be harmful. But you know, you have to listen to uh, what my experience now it is actually very beneficial, very beneficial to me, very beneficial to my friends as well. So no harm doing it. Okay, thank you for sharing with us today, Justin. Thank you, Pastor Neil. Thank you.